In this video, I'm going to explain all the equipment you'll need to get started in perfumery. So that's all the things you'll need to start making perfume at home, aside from the actual raw materials or ingredients themselves. So in this video, I'm going to cover everything that's absolutely necessary, things like pipettes and scales, and also a few things which are nice to have, but not completely necessary. So if you're new to perfumery and you want to make your own perfumes at home, but you're not sure where to start, then watch this video and by the end of it, you'll know exactly what you need to buy. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description. I did do a video on the same topic back in 2020, but now that video is a little bit dated in 2022, so I thought I'd make this updated version with all of the new things which I've discovered since, which will go and help you in your perfumery. Let's begin then. So firstly, you're going to want to go and buy your raw materials or the ingredients you might want to call them to make your perfumes out of. Now, as I said in the intro, I'm not going to cover that in this video, and I've done other videos on that in the past. I'll put a link in the description to one. And the reason I don't want to cover that in this video is because it really deserves a whole video of itself because that is kind of a complex topic, um, choosing your raw materials. Um, and I think it's worth going into detail about why you should choose specific raw materials and where you might want to choose one over the other. So I'll cover that again probably in a future video uh, to give an updated version. But in this video, we're just going to start with the equipment. So then the fundamentals or the most basic pieces of equipment, um, what do you need? Well, probably the most important thing that you're going to need in perfumery, and I would say this is non-negotiable, is a good scale. So I've got a scale here, which is a professional lab scale, and this weighs down to three decimal places. So I would recommend using a scale down to three decimal places if you can. And the reason for that is because it allows you to weigh out smaller amounts. And what that allows you to do is save a bit on your raw materials. So when you're doing perfumery, obviously you're going to have to weigh out all the different uh, raw materials or ingredients in your perfume and weigh them out according to the formula which you've written down. So obviously you need a scale in order to do that. Um, you may be asking, can I not just measure in drops? And I've done another video explaining why it's really bad idea to do perfumery in drops. So again, I'll put a link in the description to that video. So basically you're going to want to go and get yourself a scale. Now, you don't have to go and get one of these three decimal place professional lab scales, um, especially because they can be a bit more expensive, especially if you're just beginning perfumery and you want to try it out without spending too much, then you could go for one of the two decimal place scales or a pocket scale, something like that. But if you're serious about perfumery, then you definitely will save in the long run by investing in a more expensive scale, just because you're saving on the raw materials, even though that may seem a little bit counterintuitive at first. Now, another thing to be careful of when buying a scale is to note that the uh, readability of the scale is not always the same as its accuracy. And that is to say that just because your scale reads to three decimal places doesn't necessarily mean that it's accurate to three decimal places. So when you buy scales, you've both got the readability, which is the number of decimal places the scales read to, and then the accuracy, which is the actual degree of accuracy to within which the measurement as shown on the scale is valid as such. So you could go and buy a professional two decimal place lab scale that's quite expensive, way more expensive than a three decimal place cheap pocket scale. And if the accuracy on the pocket scale is low, despite it having a three decimal place readability, you might actually find that the two decimal place lab scale is more accurate overall. So when buying a scale, just be sure to check the actual accuracy of the scale as well as just the number of decimal places it reads to. So I'll put a link in the description to one of these uh, precise three decimal place lab scales. And I'll also put a link to a cheaper scale, which I think is a good alternative. Next, after the scales, you're gonna need some pipettes and that's to actually go and weigh out your raw materials. You're gonna to have to, well, suck them up with a pipette in order to drop them into the container which you're weighing your perfume into. So I've got here a pot of pipettes, which I have on my desk. And I prefer to buy these in bulk, especially because I use quite a lot of them. What I like to do is buy a box of 500 one milliliter pipettes, though three milliliter pipettes work fine as well. So here's the box that I've got. You can find these online and they're not too expensive. I would say a box of 500 pipettes lasts you quite a long time, although obviously it depends how much perfume you're making. Now you may say, um, is this not a bit unfriendly for the environment? 
using all this plastic? Can't you use a reusable pipette or keep using the same pipettes or something like that? Now, yes, unfortunately, it's not the best for the environment to keep using these plastic pipettes, but in terms of uh, doing things in a good, proper way, unfortunately, it's kind of the best way of doing things aside from the environmental uh, aspects. Now, the reason for that is, well, firstly, you can't reuse pipettes. And if you try to reuse a pipette, what will happen is it will contaminate the second thing uh, the second raw material with the first one that's still left over on the pipette. Now you could ask, can I wash the pipettes? And while in theory you might be able to wash the pipettes, in practice it doesn't really work. And the reason for that is a lot of materials in practice are quite sticky or persistent, they really like to stick to the walls of the pipette, so even if you wash them out a lot of times, um, you can still sometimes find that there is a bit of residue left over. And also, if you really go and wash it out a lot of times, you're wasting the solvents as well that you'd wash it out with. So in a sense, that's just as bad for the environment as the pipettes themselves. Now, some people like to use uh, what's called dropper bottles, which are little kind of sample vials or bottles to hold your raw materials, which have a pipette built into the top. Now, these are things that you can use if you want to. I don't do it personally and the reason why is because I've talked to a lot of people who've had bad experiences with these where you go and put all of your raw materials into these dropper bottles with pipettes built into the lids and they're fine for a few months but then what can happen to a lot of raw materials is the rubber seal around the top can start dissolving and you get um, essentially a breakdown of the top. And the reason that that's bad is because firstly the rubber or whatever it is uh, making up that seal is going down and it's contaminating your raw materials in the bottle. And secondly, it's kind of uh, destroying the barrier between the inside and the outside of the bottle, which means some of your raw materials or the alcohol which you dissolve it in can then go and evaporate and escape, which means um, essentially the concentration of what's inside, which is something that's very important to keep constant in perfumery, will actually change to an unknown level. So this kind of, on a scientific level, ruins your perfumes. So I would recommend using plastic pipettes, but you can try to use the dropper bottles if you want. If you want to go kind of a hybrid way, what I would recommend is taking dropper bottles for the things that you use most of the time. So there are some raw materials you might use in a lot of your perfumes, things like Isui Super or Hedione. You could go and use a dropper bottle for those because by using it for those, you'll be saving as many pipettes as possible. And then for the rarely used materials that are one-offs that you're not going to use um, between months at a time, then just go and use the disposable pipettes for those. Just note if you do that, you may have to go and change those dropper bottles every year or so in order just to keep them fresh. Next then, we have your perfumer's alcohol. So I did a whole video about which alcohol you should buy for perfumery the other week. So if you're confused about which alcohol to buy, then I'll leave a link in the description to that video. Uh, go and check that out. Another thing to go with your alcohol is actually one of these wash bottles. Now, I didn't used to use these, but I had the idea and started using one, and since then, it's been really, really useful. So these are used in uh, scientific labs, essentially, for holding things like solvents, and they're useful for washing out your glassware when you finish with them. But because of this kind of nozzle here, they're also really good at squirting uh, your alcohol straight into a bottle. And this is really useful when making up dilutions, because if you're making a dilution of your raw material, which is something I'd recommend you do when you start perfumery, you're going to want to weigh out the alcohol into the bottle with your raw material. Now, what I found is that obviously when weighing out your alcohol, it's going to take you quite a few pipettes. So it can start to take not ages, but the seconds do kind of build up. Whereas if you get one of these, you can just take your empty bottle, squirt a load of alcohol in it, and then just work out from that how much raw material you need to add for your dilution. So I find that having one of these, and they're really pretty cheap, just saves you a lot of time. So I think it's quite a nice thing to have. Talking of your dilutions, obviously aside from just the alcohol and the raw materials, you're actually going to need a bottle to put those in. So in terms of sample vials, um, you could go and buy whatever sample vials you want. However, there are a few things to note. So firstly, I would recommend never buying plastic sample vials, and that's because, well, the plastic can interact with your perfume. There can be a reaction. Sometimes the plastic can dissolve into the perfume, and this can do things like leave your perfume cloudy and just generally contaminate it, and at worst, it can even cause a leaking of the bottle. So never use plastic bottles. Always use glass. 
And then on top of that, I would always look for bottles with what are called polycone lined caps. So you can go and buy a lot of um, these sample vials which are used for things like aromatherapy and a lot of them have just a generic plastic cap. And just like the plastic in the kind of plastic bottles, um, your perfume or even just the vapor of your perfume can dissolve into or react with that plastic lid. So again, you can find that your perfume gets contaminated or you have a reaction or something like that or even your perfume leaks out quite easily. I've had it in the past where one of my raw materials was stored in a uh, bottle with one of those old style plastic caps and the raw material actually started evaporating through the top of the lid and left droplets of the raw material on the top outside of the lid. So on top of the lid, outside of the bottle, even though the bottle was completely sealed shut. So this just kind of goes to show to be careful with those kind of things. What I would recommend is looking specifically for sample bottles with what's called polycone lined caps. And that's because there's this polycone material which is very inert, which means it doesn't react much. And these create a really good uh, non-reactive seal, which essentially keeps your perfume inside safe from kind of evaporating out or reacting with any part of the bottle, including the lid. So these are often a bit more expensive, but I would say they're definitely worth the price if you can get them. So again, I'll put a link where you can find some of these online. Now that's for the sample bottles themselves. So as well as the bottles, another thing I'd recommend is actually getting labels for your bottles because, well, if you have a load of bottles without any kind of labeling, then you're not going to have a clue what's in them. So obviously some kind of labels are important. Um, I also recommend getting circular labels on top and that's because if you've got a load of bottles lined up in a tray when you're looking top down instead of having to pick up each bottle and look at the label to see what's in it you can quickly search for things just by looking uh, from overhead. Now you can get printable labels online so these are labels that you put in your printer and then you can put a design on them on your computer and then you can print those out and I think those are really good if you want to have kind of like nice looking labels um, but if you don't want to go through all that trouble then just get a sheet of kind of labels and just use a pen to write on the thing. Now as well as the uh, labels, another thing that I like to do with the bottles is actually get a rack to hold the bottles. And when I first started perfumery I didn't have any racks, I just had all the bottles laid out on my desk. But you can imagine when you've got kind of hundreds of bottles, like 100 or 200 uh, bottles on your shelves or your desk, it gets messy really quickly and I find personally when everything's a mess around me, that kind of stops me being as creative or as peaceful or as concentrated when I'm doing my perfumery. So I like to use racks for a lot of my raw materials to organize them. Now, again, this is not necessary, especially if you're just beginning or if you don't want to spend too much money. But if you get things like this, which you can use to line the back of your desk or on your shelves and just organize things into a nice orderly way, I find um, it can just make your quality of life when doing perfumery a lot better. Um, so that's just another one I thought I'd throw in there. Next, I want to talk a little bit about writing down your formulas and also making notes of your raw materials. And this is something that's extremely important to do in perfumery. Imagine making a perfume and then not writing down the formula so you didn't know uh, how to make it again if you really liked it. Or imagine um, you had a raw material and then you went and smelled it, left it in the cupboard for six months and you never took any notes, for example, how long does it last or what does it smell like? Um, how are you going to know if you're making a perfume if that raw material is the right one to use if you don't have any kind of reference on it? So the most basic way of going about this is obviously just to use a notepad. So I've got one here. Um, this one is a Field Notes notebook and I really like this brand uh, of notebook but they are a bit pricey so I would check these out but um, if you just want to save cash then you can just go and buy the cheapest notebook, any notebook will do. And obviously inside this you can go and do things like write ideas for your formulas, you can write notes on your raw materials um, and you can write down your formulas and all that kind of stuff. And if you are using a notebook like that, I would also recommend getting a well, scientific calculator. You don't have to get a scientific one, but I just find them a bit easier to use. Um, so you can just get a calculator and that will help you do things like if you want to make a dilution, um, you know, how much alcohol do you need to add to how much of your raw material. Um, and if you want to scale up a formula, say you've got everything at 10% dilution, but you want to make it a bit more concentrated up to 15% or something like that, um, you can do all the maths for that with a calculator. So you might have one of those left over from like school or something, that'll be fine to use. Now there are other methods or other things you can use instead of a notebook. Um, and this was a big thing for me when I started doing perfumery because I found that I was just wanting to write down way too much information to be able to put in a notebook in an organized way which I could easily refer back to. And I would also find, um, for example, I would make notes about a raw material but then I would want to edit those notes. And obviously if you've already gone and written your nice neat notes, um, 
it's a bit awkward to, you can't really make more space on the paper, for example, if you want to fit something in or things like that. So what I actually went and did to solve this problem was I went and made an app to go and do all that stuff for me. So this part of the video, you could say is a bit biased because um, I made this app, um, but there are alternatives. So what I went and did was I made an app called Formula, which I use on my iPad. And essentially this works as a place where I can write all the notes about my raw materials. And you can also go and write all of your formulas and do things like get the calculations for dilutions and scaling, all that kind of stuff automatically. Um, so that's one option. If you've got like an iPad or a Mac, you can actually go and download my app if you want to do that. And the idea of that is just to make life easier because uh, I had this issue back then where all this stuff was hard to organize and I want to solve that problem. So if you want to just go and benefit off that, then you can just go and get this app. Now, not everyone has a Mac or an iPad or wants to get an app. There are other options as well. So there are firstly other softwares and apps that you can use on Windows if you don't have a Mac. So the ones that I know about are, there's something called Parfum Pro. There's something called, uh, I think, JB Parfum. And there's also the Perfume as well. They make a software called Perfumer's Notebook. Um, so those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. You can always go and check those out if you're interested in software. And another thing that a lot of people go and do instead of using an app at all is just to do everything in Excel. Now, I don't like this personally. That's just because I prefer everything to kind of be in a nice organized kind of purpose built space, which is what an app provides. But um, especially if you're good with spreadsheets um, and you want to put all your raw materials, for example, into like a database spreadsheet, and then you can go and write your formulas um, kind of using Excel, then you can go and do that as well. And there are some spreadsheets that people have already made. So if you're not so good at Excel, you can kind of get like most of the work done for you. So I'll try to put a link to some of those in the description as well. So you've kind of got quite an array of options there. Um, basically, if you want to go really traditional, you can just go for the notebook, pen and paper. Um, if you want to go for something more complex, use an app or Again, if you just want to use something simpler, but you still want to use a computer so you can kind of save things and edit them without having to, you know, like scribble stuff out, you can then just go and use Excel. So that's what I recommend for kind of all of your information organization, raw materials notes, your formulas, all that kind of stuff. Another thing that I forgot to mention, I probably should have put this a bit earlier in the video because I actually think it's really important, is uh, scent strips. So you can get these little paper strips. Um, some people call them blotter papers, I call them scent strips, and they're essentially this kind of absorbent paper, and you can use those to dip them in your raw materials, your pre-diluted raw materials, or your perfume blends, and then you put the perfume on it, you just label it, and then you can smell it. And what this does is it helps you to, well, it allows you to evaluate your perfumes without having to put them on your skin. And if you want to do any reasonable amount or any kind of amount of perfumery in one day that's more than just a couple of things, um, obviously there's only so much space on your skin and once you put something on your skin, you don't want to put something else on top of it because then the smell is going to get mixed up and they're going to cross contaminate all that kind of thing. So you can go and test your perfume blends on your skin to see how they would actually uh, go and react in the real world. Um, but I would save that just for when you're kind of finalizing a perfume. For kind of day-to-day -day life, what professionals do in the industry and what I do and what I would recommend you do as well is simply get some of these paper strips and evaluate everything on that. The other thing that's good about these is um, some of these molecules um, and perfumes can actually react with your skin. So different perfumes smell different on different people. So if you test everything on your skin, some of the uh, smells might kind of actually, you might have a biased opinion. They may end up being a bit different on you than they might be on someone else. Whereas if you uh, test everything as a baseline on these paper strips, you kind of get the most um, regular or most um, kind of unbiased uh, way to evaluate everything. So it's just very consistent. So I would recommend getting some of these. You may be um, thinking as a beginner, I really don't want to invest on all these like, you know, I don't want to buy a load of just like paper strips because it's kind of like expensive to just pay for paper. Um, but, and I understand where that's coming from. When I started perfumery, I didn't. But honestly, I wish I just started buying these straight away. Um, if you buy them in bulk, they're really not that expensive and it's just a good way of working. It will it will help you learn perfumery quicker and probably save you more um, trials and more trouble. And it'll probably save you more in the long run just by using these as part of your workflow. I would just say that it's the best thing to do. Um, so get, go and get some scent strips. Now, this next bit is a bit more optional. Um, so if you do wanna save some more money, you can skip this. But something that I found recently that I quite like is actually these scent strip holders. So what these are is essentially, um, you can get them quite cheaply. They're little wooden blocks with crocodile clips on. 
and you can go and put your scent strips in these and it just allows you to hold a lot of them at once. So um, firstly, it stops the ends, the wet end with all your perfume on from hitting your desk, which is important. Uh, and this stops kind of cross contamination of your desk with the perfume. Now you don't need one of these holders because what you can do is you can, you can fold up the end of the scent strip and that will stop it touching the desk. But um, I find that these are quite nice because um, it's nice to have these kind of straight scent strips and say you're working on a project with a few different variations of a perfume or you want to compare some raw materials, then you can just go and put these on this and you can just go around and smell them quite quickly, um, like compare them, it's very nice. And also it just helps you stay organized because instead of a load of paper strips lying across your desk, you just kind of have that there and you know it takes up less space and if you want to move it around it's much easier to like move all five scent strips at once so i think the scent strip holders are quite nice but again if you're just a, like just beginning your first time or um, you just really want to save money then they're not really necessary so then i think that's most of the really important things covered but i will uh, throw in some other things which are also pretty useful to have so one of them is a kitchen roll Maybe this would actually be a really important thing, and this is simply because if you have a spillage, you really want to have some kitchen roll or something nearby just to be able to quickly wipe everything up. Because you know, if you accidentally spill a bottle of perfume, and you know it happens to everyone, um, if you've already got this kind of paper here, it will just save you a lot. Um, hopefully, it can help it stop kind of spreading and getting your whole desk wet and everything that may be on it. Next, you may actually want a spray bottle to put your final perfumes into. So this isn't really necessary if you're just kind of making perfumes for yourself and you're happy to, um, you know, test them straight from the sample bottles. But I think most people find at some point they want to actually make a perfume that looks like a perfume and it's in a spray bottle. So you can find a lot of these spray bottles online with a screw on cap and you can simply fill up your perfume into these and then there you go. Now there are some, um, so some of these spray bottles are screw-ons, which is probably what's recommended for beginners. Um, most professional perfumes or perfumes you find in the shop are made with something called uh, crimp-on uh, atomizers. So the spray thing is called an atomizer. And if you're looking to actually go and sell your perfumes, I recommend looking into uh, crimp-on uh, perfume things. But I'm not gonna cover that in this video because I'm just talking about kind of uh, beginners and getting started. I have done, I think, another video on that somewhere on my channel. So you can get some spray bottles or atomizers as they're called. Then obviously another thing when you're going to fill those bottles is if you're making a nice finished perfume for someone, you actually want to filter your perfume if possible. And that's because sometimes things like dust can get into your perfume while you're making it. And also sometimes um, in rare cases, there can be actual like solids or bits that come out of the perfume when you mix the things together. So what I recommend for this is to get a funnel. Um, so you get a funnel and then you can either put that straight into your, your perfume bottle or you can put it into a beaker. Then what you can do is get some of this filter paper, which you can get in discs. And if you fold that a few times, you can put that in the top of the funnel and then you can filter that through into your beaker or into your perfume bottle. And what that does is it just filters out all of those things like dust. And that helps because it stops any solids that may accidentally be in there, um, which could go and then block the spray pump. So if you've got a lot of bits floating around in your perfume, they can actually go and clog up the spray pump, which can go and stop it from working. So I would recommend just filtering out, especially if you're gonna like sell or give your perfumes or anything like that. But even if you're just making something for yourself and you wanna make a nice finished product, I would recommend filtering it. Another thing that I've got here is nitrile gloves. Now I don't use these too often, but if you wanna be extra safe, or especially when you're handling raw materials that are a bit more uh, dangerous when in their concentrated form, you may wanna get some of these gloves just to protect your hands. So in case you do spill anything, um, you've got a bit of protection. Now, finally, another thing that I wanted to add, I don't actually have examples of them with me right here, um, but if you're weighing out solid materials, which are things like powders, so things like vanillin, um, it can actually help to have a little metal spatula just to help scoop them out of your raw materials into your bottle. Another thing I'd recommend is actually uh, weighing boats. And this is useful if you're making a larger batch of perfume. Say you're gonna make um, quite a few perfumes and you wanna make your perfume concentrate or you wanna go make a lot of it. So you wanna take some of your powder and you wanna weigh it out or say you've got multiple powders. Now, when you put your powder into the bottle, 
for into the beaker or whatever you're using, you can't really go and get it back out if there's already other stuff in there because you risk uh, it being contaminated. Say I've gone and put in some vanilla in, and then I wanna go and add some uh, like Evanil afterwards, which are both powders. If I've already got a beaker full of vanilla in, if I put in too much Evanil, I can't go and scoop it back out because I might accidentally get some of the vanilla in with it. So then I wouldn't know how much of that I had. So essentially I'd have to start again. What you can go and do is buy these things called weighing boats, which are little plastic uh, containers. And instead you can just weigh the powder out onto those on your scales, and then you just tip those in. So if you accidentally put too much in your weighing boat because nothing else has been in there, it's fine. You can just go and put that back into your bottle of the raw material. Then finally, um, another thing that could be useful is a pestle and mortar. So these are like big stone bowls with like a, a thing that you uh, you hit against it. And these essentially are good for like breaking up uh, like resins and solids. So if you have some raw materials like say benzoin resinoid, for example, which come in kind of like uh, big lumpy crystals, um, they're gonna take a long time to dissolve. So it's much better to get them into a powder before you go and dissolve them to make your dilutions. That's it. Yep, that's pretty much all you need. So I tried to make it so the more important things are towards the start of the video and some of the less important things are a bit more towards the end of the video. Um, I would say, yeah, definitely the scales, uh, sample vials, scent strips, pipettes, and at least something to write down everything on, also some labels. Um, those are probably gonna be your most important things, aside from obviously having your alcohol and your raw materials as well. So yeah, I hope you picked up something useful in this video. Um, hopefully you found it helpful. Hopefully you found uh, something that you didn't know about before. And yeah, that's about it. If you're interested in perfumery and you wanna learn about how to make perfumes and see more videos like these, definitely uh, consider subscribing to my channel. I release another video like this every week where I teach you how to make perfumes, how to learn about the raw materials, how to go and blend them together, and also obviously tips on things like uh, the equipment that you'll need and uh, just things to help you get started and understand maybe some of the more confusing things that um, you can have trouble with, especially when you're just starting out. So thank you for watching the video and enjoy the rest of your day.